Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. In this video, I have the non-spoiler review of Project Power, directed by Henry Juice and Ariel Shulman, starring Jamie Foxx, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Dominique Fishback. I got all the information coming up next. So I gotta get into the specs. I gotta get into all of the details of the movie because if you watch any of my reviews on the channel and those of you who are newbies, I always go into who are the directors, who are the writers, who are the producers, who is in control of the casting because that helps you understand the feeling and the fluidity of the movie. Just watching it and basing it on who are the actors that's only a salt grain of what makes a movie a movie. So let's get into the director. We have Henry Joost. He's German born, but he was raised in America. So I feel like I have to say his name Joost. <laughs> but he's a young guy. He's 39 and he's more well known for the paranormal activity movies three and four. So they can give you an idea of how he directs and the feelings and the turns and the angles of the movie. We do see that with this movie. We do see that style incorporated in Project Power. Also, um, it's produced, which I found very interesting, by Eric Newman. Now, Eric Newman, he is uh, the producer of Narcos. So you see a lot of that in this movie as well. And it did remind me, as I watched this film, it did remind me of television a little bit. It had that super crisp, HD kind of feeling, but it, it took me out of movie mode here and there, and it did feel like I was looking at a television series. So that's where we get that feel as we're watching it, as it looks that way. And written by Matson Tomlin. Now, with Matson, he is this developing writer, and I love the fact that they incorporated this guy um, to kind of lay out this movie incorporated with the screenplay team. He's also coming out in 2021. Now I'm pretty sure that's gonna change a lot due to the pandemic, but the original release date for Project Power was August in theaters of 2020. But of course, because of the pandemic, this is a Netflix original okay film and with this gentleman he is coming out uh with a movie called the batman now everybody there's twenty thousand different directors and, and people that have their own perspective of batman right uh, but he's coming out with his version that he's written and that trailer the full trailer should be released later on this year so back to project power now let's talk about who it's starring and then we'll get into the synopsis of what the movie is about and what I thought about the movie in a non-spoiler fashion. So of course we have Jamie Foxx. Can I take you home, girl? Get you a shout out to Terrell, Texas. T-E-R-R-E-L-L, -L -L, Texas, that's right. Uh, and of course, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. We all know who Joseph Gordon-Levitt is. You know, that's my oh, my oh, my oh, my oh. My boo -hoo. I mean, I love me some Joseph. <laughs> he has a resume a mile long. We all know who he is. Now, let's get into Dominique Fishback. Now, in this synopsis for this movie, she does play a high school student, but she is 29 years young. I mean, let's just say again, black don't crack, okay? She's been on a lot of things, and her, film her filmography is very impressive. Um, she's done a lot of television, Blue, Blue Bloods, Royal Pains, uh, the Do's, you know, a lot of things like that. Also in 2018, we saw uh, Sprinkles of Her and The Hate You Give, um, Night Comes On, several different pro uh, projects. And also she is in The Judas and the Black Messiah. Make sure that you check out my review for that movie as well. But she will play a critical role in that movie. So now let's get more into this project power and the synopsis of what to expect. Okay, so I'm just gonna read the basic plot and then we can go from there. So Project Power is a 2020 superhero film directed by 
Ariel Shulman and Henry Juice, uh, produced by Eric Newman and a few others, written by Madsen Tolman, stars Jamie Foxx, Jason Gordon-Levin, Dominic Fishback, alongside other, uh, I feel if I introduce those actors, it may be some spoilers, but the basic synopsis is we do have a certain character that follows a drug dealer, a police officer, a formal so and a formal soldier who team up to stop the distribution of a pill that gives users superpowers for five minutes. Now this film, as I mentioned before, was scheduled to release August 14, 2020 by Netflix. So a Netflix original. And also an additional note, it, the, the production company is Screen Arcade and they are really making a name for themselves. Themselves, they're still newbies when it comes to production, and Netflix is on the ball when it comes to not waiting on theaters, but giving the users that power and deciding what they want to watch, and then it brings viewers in. You, as you notice, they have like a top 10. What's the most watched film? What's the most watched series? And that's just like easy peasy promotion aka a commercial in other words and you've already paid for the account and you're looking at it and it's at your fingertips you don't have to leave home so netflix is on the ball uh, as well as disney plus and a lot of other things hbo max it's just like what's the point of having cable everything's just anywho back to this so with my review and and looking at this film it is to me a mixture of Bloodshot starring Vin Diesel. I did the review on that and I did say that that idea was a great idea and it wouldn't surprise me if I see this same idea incorporated in other movies. Now, a lot of people say, said that that movie sucked and it was terrible, what, what the mess, but it seemed like I was watching a mixture of that limitless um, starring Bradley Cooper with sprinkles of systematic racism and racial injustice mixed together in the soup then you got Project Power it's all of that in one if that sounds interesting to you then you'll like this movie as I mentioned before the movie has this feeling of a television series when I looked up some of the critic reviews, Yahoo, IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, they kind of gave this an eh, so-so uh, review. And I could see why. I thought it was okay. I give it a strong C plus to a strong B. The reason is because there's so much that could have been incorporated so far as content. Um, that it, it seemed like it was something missing but it was still a good movie um, i do feel that if i went to the movies and paid for it i would still be satisfied but not this oh my goodness look at this movie because i've seen limitless and if you have not seen that movie please see that that movie is absolutely amazing and i gave the same kind of rate with the movie starring vin diesel here's why if there's a wonderful idea, and I do think that they did get that idea from, uh, I think it's called Bloodshot. <laughs> um, and I will put those links um, in the comments so you can click on that where I go in more into detail about my reviews uh, about that movie. Um, but it has this feeling as if you're watching television, wonderful idea, wonderful concept, but it seems like it's just something missing. I can't really put my finger on it. I think if there had been a glossy hue of more of a movie feel, then it would have pulled us into the action a little bit more. I think with the budgeting that they had, budgeting was quite impressive um, for this movie, which was 85.1 million. That's a nice chunk of change. So we are seeing high budgeted films that are being placed on Netflix that are Netflix originals. So that's quite impressive because you usually only saw this with theater ingested movies. So I thought that was pretty great. What makes this movie interesting is because you have a good cast, but it's if I feel cheated because we have the movie time frame of 114 minutes. So it seems as if they're pulling you in. 
without giving anything away, it does bleed and insinuate sequel. And it does have the energy of, it would make more sense if this movie were a television series and not a movie. And I say that because things are moving so quickly and smashed together that we're not really getting a chance to have character development. I noticed that with Dominique's character, we have an idea of who she is. We have more of a backstory with Jamie Foxx's character, and we really don't know that much about Joseph's character. And now that I'm saying that out loud, I think that is what's missing. Character development. We have ideas of who the characters are. We have an idea of the plot. But it's just kind of skimmed over and, and it felt like it just went a little too fast. I really would have hoped that they would have pumped the brakes a little bit more about the depth of who the individuals were who made this super pill. And also a, a, another note, project power. When we start to get into the underline of how this is developed, because more of a synopsis, it is a near future New Orleans, a mysterious distributor um, offers a free supply of power, uh, a pill that grants this unpredictable superpower for five minutes to a group of, of drug dealers. So they're giving the plot more into depth. They're giving this superpower pill to people in these poverty stricken areas. So it gives you, like I said, the more of the, in, the, the injustice sprinkled on the top, mixed with the blood sport, mixed with the, the bloodshot, mixed with the limitless, is that they've added that on top of it. And I think that's how that story blends. If you think about in reality, real life, the projects, and you do your research about CIA journals and people who have quit the CIA, people who have quit working for the FBI, there's a reason why areas of poverty are called the projects because they literally were projects by the government. They infused free guns. They had photos. You can really go to the library and, and do your research. But when you do your research after you've checked out the book, now you're on government file. Very interesting. And they will pretty much monitor why you want the book and why you're reading the book. But that's a totally different video literally proof of them leaving crates of guns in the projects to see what they would do with it, incorporating crack into poverty-stricken areas, not having access to certain things. Project, so project power, incorporating that into being a project. So that kind of lets you know the insight of how to think about this movie i thought it was it was like i said a c a, a, a c plus b it wasn't phenomenal because i think that there wasn't enough development we had ideas of who characters were but it wasn't executed that well i think having a heavy hitter like jamie fox and joseph and dominique really helped the movie i think had it been an actor that we really haven't heard of the movie wouldn't have gotten as much attention. <clears throat> it sucks, but it's the business. You need those faces to pull in viewers. And also with that budget of over $80 million, we do have some pretty, pretty good um, visual effects. Um, so overall, I do think it's worth the watch. It brings on a lot of conversation about things in the world, um, the how the government in real life um, has projects that they put on people who are poor. Um, look at it. Let me know what you think. I'm not going to spoil it because it do. the story does have some twists and turns. Let me know what you think. Try not to put too many spoilers in the comments, you guys, or please put spoiler alert before your statement so people can know when to stop reading your comment if they haven't seen it yet. If you, if you haven't seen it yet, Make sure that you check it out on Netflix and let me know what you think. Um, I don't want to give anything away. This is non-spoiler. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Comment away. Let me know what you thought. I think it was worth the watch. It's not a great A plus stand in ovation stand up to me, but it was a good watch. I mean, it's a pandemic movie. Like I said, if I went to the theater and went to go see it, I would have been satisfied and saying, 
It was okay. It was okay. I thought it was an okay movie. Not terrible, not splendiferous, but okay. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Until next time, stay tuned for more. Stay precautious of COVID-19 and protect yourself, but not fearful. I love you guys. Until next time. <laughs>